Not long ago in the great state of Texas, in the great city of Houston, Texas, some conservative activists got together and formed a group that they named them, and, and, and they named themselves, they named their group after this street in Boston, King Street. Uh, King Street in Boston, not King Street in Texas. King Street as in Old King George III, who happened to be the king in charge when British troops guarding the King Street Customs House opened fire on American colonists in Boston. Five people died in the King Street shooting, which eventually became known as the Boston Massacre. The date was March 5th, 1770. A couple of centuries later, in 2009, Houston conservatives founded a Tea Party group and they named their group the King Street Patriots after the site of the Boston Massacre, after the site of that historic and bloody confrontation. And while it may seem that much of the Tea Party movement has withered away or just turned into a name brand part of standard Republican politics these days, the King Street Patriots Tea Party group does have this one other very specific thing that they're doing that is definitely growing. It's this true the vote. They call it an anti-voter fraud project. You can see from the hipsterish buttons that they are recruiting, right? Uh, you can donate, you can volunteer. Need voter ID? Well, do you? True the vote's motto is equipping citizens to take a stand for free and fair elections. We got our first look at what true the vote meant by that soon after they were founded in the fall of 2010 in Houston. The county attorney says it's received numerous complaints about overzealous poll watchers at several heavily minority early voting locations, including here at Kashmir Gardens, where a poll watcher told us he was recruited by True the Vote, an organization that proclaims rooting out voter fraud as its main goal. Reports at the time showed that the poll watchers in and around Houston that year tended to be white people, and they tended to hang around in districts that were mostly not white, that were mostly African American. These mostly white watchers were looking down over mostly black crowds, and sometimes they wandered around among the cramped voting booths, white poll watchers watching over black precincts and black voters. So many voters and election workers complained about the aggressive tactics and general atmosphere of intimidation in those sites, that the U.S. Justice Department announced it would send in federal observers. That was True the Vote in 2010. Since that Houston election, True the Vote has continued training volunteers, and they have left the confines of Houston, big time. Now True the Vote's model for poll watching and challenging voter registration is in place, they say, in at least 20 states. The group's Tea Party organizers say they want it to be everywhere, coast to coast. True the Vote says it will have trained a million poll watchers in time for the November election with, quote, no polling place unmanned. A leader of this True the Vote group reportedly told a national summit this year that the effect of all these volunteers on voters is supposed to be, and I quote, like driving and seeing the police behind you. Excuse me, fo the police following you. <clears throat> Come on down to your friendly local polling place. Be like the police are following you there. Is this really how we're going to run the 2012 election? Maybe so. Uh, in addition to the national summit in Texas, True the Vote has been holding summits in other states. Last month, they held one in Florida. The list of sponsors included the Mighty Mighty AstroTurf Koch Brothers funded Americans for Prosperity for this project of the humble King Street Patriots Tea Partiers. Last week, True the Vote held a summit in Colorado. Colorado's Republican Secretary of State, Scott Gessler, was one of the featured speakers. He's the guy in charge of elections in Colorado. Mr. Gessler has spent his year trying to stop county clerks from mailing ballots to all the people who usually get one, including some troops overseas. And last week, before his True the Vote speaking engagement, Mr. Gessler wrote to 4,000 Colorado voters and told them either to prove that they're eligible to vote or get off the rolls. On Saturday, True the Vote will hold another summit, this one in Ohio. In that state, the new Republican majority has tried to make it harder to vote, significantly harder. They tried to cut the days for early voting in half. Ultimately, after Democratic pressure, they had to settle for cutting only the last three days of early voting. As we've been reporting on the show for the last couple of weeks, the Republican Secretary of State in Ohio, John Husted, then allowed some Republican counties to expand the time for early voting in those counties, even as he blocked Democratic voties, Democratic counties from doing the same. He was going to make it easier to vote if you're a Republican than if you are a Democrat, until finally, under a lot of public pressure and attention, he decided that, all right, we won't go county by county. Instead, we're going to cut early voting for everybody, less voting for everyone. And now he has threatened to fire two Democratic elections officials who say they still want voting on nights and weekends, which has been especially popular with African-American voters in Ohio. 
So what will Ohio Secretary of State John Husted be doing this weekend? How will he be occupying his Saturday before the Republican convention? He will be a featured speaker at the Tea Party-backed True the Vote Ohio Summit. John Husted, the guy running the elections in the state of Ohio in a presidential election year. That guy, for reals. This True the Vote thing has gone big time. Joining us now is Wendy Weiser. She's director of the Democracy Program at the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU School of Law. Wendy, thank you for being here. It's nice okay. to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, I know that you're not an expert on the history of True the Vote, but in terms of the kinds of things that they have done, did I get anything that you know to be wrong in that intro? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, how concerned are you about uh, poll watching efforts and um, whether they constitute voter intimidation? I'm very concerned this year. You know, it is, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with people watching the polls, and we should certainly be taking all reasonable steps to stop voter fraud or any other kind of misconduct on elections, but it's simply not reasonable to actually allow self appointed political operatives to act as um, self-appointed police officers of our voting process when the polls. The, when they got involved in the Wisconsin election earlier this year, True the Vote was very open about the fact that they wanted to have a big presence at the Scott Walker recall election. When, when, when Scott Walker was not recalled from office, True the Vote described that as a victory. That election outcome as being the victory that they were there looking for. Do partisan declarations like that create any sort of higher standard um, of anything that they have to do in order to justify putting themselves in polling places the way they have? You know, unfortunately, this is a problem with the law. We actually allow partisan political operatives to go in there in many states and to challenge voters' eligibility on election day to create an intimidating environment um, with very few standards. This is something that we really need to fix. Is it left is this some vestigial leftover thing from something that used to make sense and it doesn't anymore? Was there ever a good reason for this or was this has this been part of voter intimidation? back through the through through history you know many of these laws were put in place precisely for the purpose of keeping down minority votes especially black votes um, after um, reconstruction for example um, in Ohio for example um, uh, in 1868 we had um, challenger legislation that actually expressly said that you can challenge people based on and I'm quoting here um, if they have a distinct and visible admixture of African blood that were the wow. grounds of challenges you know maybe Maybe this might have made sense in a day when you can tell whether or not people were eligible to vote based on what they look like, based on the color of their skin or their gender, but we don't live in that society anymore. We actually all have equal voting access, and this is something that's a, a relic from a bygone era and doesn't make any sense in modern elections. We saw a little bit of what True the Vote looked like in those Houston elections. We played some of that local news coverage there. If they really are going to be coast to coast, and I'm assuming they're going to focus on swing states if they're not going to be coast to coast, do you, as somebody who studies this, and you as an attorney have any advice for somebody who feels intimidated by somebody in their polling place like that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is actually illegal to discriminate against voters. It is illegal to intimidate voters. It's illegal to disrupt the polling place. It's even illegal to target people unreasonably for um, vote suppression. If you see any of this, you should report it to your election officials. You should report it to law enforcement officials. This is something that we need to be vigilant against. You know, no matter what the intentions are of the people doing these operations, they can and often do slide into using tactics that suppress legitimate votes. So we need to push back against that. People need to be confident in their right to vote and know that they have redress Absolutely. if they need it. Wendy Weiser, Director of the Democracy Program uh, at the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU School of Law. Thanks for being here. It's nice to have your advice. Thank Thanks. you for having me.